Hello, everyone. Welcome to this live webinar on sharing some information with all the prospective students and their parents um, that are interested in potentially studying at the Department of Management and Global Business called MGB. Um, and my name is Professor Mukesh Patel, and I'm accompanied here with two of my colleagues and partners, um, as well as friends, both Donna Brancato, Brancato, and she's with the administration uh, of RBS, as well as Ronald Richter. He's also both a faculty member, actually both of them are, um, as well as uh, part of certain administrative initiatives as well. We will also be accompanied by some current students, including some innovation fellows, uh, some who are seniors, some who are underclassmen, um, and some who are affiliated with some of the programs that I'll be talking about. Uh, and their, their studies are interdisciplinary between Rutgers Business School, which we called RBS, um, and other schools and majors at the university as well. Uh, exploring opportunities for interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary learning. And we might even have a couple of recent alumni. So we've got a great group of people and um, I first have a presentation for you, which will last approximately 25 to 30 minutes, after which we will open it up for a Q&A. If you have questions in the interim, um, feel free to post them in the chat box. If you would like to uh, wait until uh, the Q&A session, you can do that as well, your choice. Uh, by default, we have muted everyone on this call. Um, and to the extent that you are not muted, we request that you mute yourself during the presentation portion uh, just to minimize the feedback loop or any background noise. And then afterwards during Q&A, certainly we will address your questions, call on you uh, based on your questions in the chat box. If the answers have not already been answered by Donna or myself, uh, perhaps even by some of the students uh, or alumni, and uh, then we can have an open dialogue. So, even though this session has been blocked for 2 hours, we believe that we should be able to finish uh, significantly earlier, but I will stay around as long as you need to answer any questions that you have at the end. I'll also give you my email address. Feel free to uh, reach out after this webinar, if you'd like to continue any discussion or have any follow-up questions. You can also search lots of departments and resources on the Rutgers uh, Business School website, um, and there's numerous resources there as well. First and foremost now, after getting that uh, administrative part out of the way, Donna, would, would you like to say anything or welcome them as well? Thank you, Mukesh. I wanna welcome everybody at this, this initiative we have now on um, remote learning, remote sessions. It's been a huge success. We want to welcome you all. Um, we, we have a wonderful host here today, Mukesh Patel. Dr. Patel has taught in my classes, has, has been speakers at numerous conferences. Wonderful speaker. Um, be prepared to be thrilled and talk. <laughs> Take it away, Mukesh. Okay, thank you. We also have Ron Richter, another professor at Rutgers Business School um, and a professional. Ron, would you like to say a few words? Um, yeah, sure. Hopefully you can hear me now. Yes, perfect. Well, thank wanna, you. I just want to welcome everybody. Uh, this is an initiative we put together so that you can learn more about Rutgers University. Uh, so we have a bunch of sessions for the next almost two weeks. Uh, so we're kicking it off with McCash. And again, I think you'll be excited after you hear what he has to say. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Donna. Um, I also have some some of my amazing students, and at the end, I'd love for them to also speak. And so we can get started. Um, let's start with. Hopefully, everyone is doing well. Um, every everyone and their families and loved ones are staying healthy and safe uh, during our unprecedented times and crazy times that we currently are experiencing. Um, there are numerous resources that are available for families and small businesses or uh, companies and students. So please take advantage of them. If you're not familiar with some of them, um, you can look at the Rutgers website and there's other websites from the government as well. And every state 
uh, nonprofit organizations and state agencies also have resources. So please avail yourselves uh, to them. Um, for all the seniors that are on this webinar, seniors in high school, uh, we feel your pain. Um, many of us faculty members have students, have our own kids that are high school and or college students or recent alumni. And so it's not easy what you're going through. Um, we can certainly empathize and understand that you might be missing perhaps um, a very significant and meaningful portion of your senior high school, of your high school experience, um, including, you know, the friendships that you formed during the last term, uh, the last several months before graduation, uh, your commencement ceremony, um, proms, and other just friendships and relationships with both your, your teaching faculty, your guidance counselors, your fellow students, and uh, parents as well. So uh, that's a tough one. Um, the only thing I can preface uh, or comment on that, being a parent and a father uh, of, of younger kids, is that um, this perhaps might be that moment in our all of our lives that becomes a learning teaching moment on how to deal with uncertainty, gray space, adversity, setbacks, um, lots of those things that textbooks will never teach us and uh, classes or courses or classrooms within four walls may never really expose us. And so this is perhaps a very unique time and a unique case study for everyone on how to deal with adversity and challenges at scale. Um, you know, and lots of these challenges kind of cross over lines between family and siblings and parents and kids and loved ones and academics. So we can appreciate it. We're all in this together. And um, we do cheer you and celebrate your success in high school. Um, that does not go unnoticed. Uh, it's just a different medium and a different form in which we perhaps will celebrate virtually unless and until um, when other executive orders or decisions are made uh, federally, statewide, or local. So hopefully you're, you're doing well and continue to be well and be safe. With that said, let's get started. Um, I will put this in presentation mode and you should still be able to um, see the chat box or pull that up and um, also the participants. So very quickly, we talked about MGP, Management and Global Business. That's the department in which, uh, in which is my headquarters at Rutgers Business School. Um, and in this department, we focus on leadership and management, as well as entrepreneurship, innovation, and global perspectives. I'll briefly run you through the undergraduate major, some uh, concentrations, um, what the minor option is, um, and some clubs that you, and initiatives that you might want to consider. And so just very briefly, my background, uh, as I indicated, Mukesh Patel, I studied at Rutgers as an undergrad. Um, I am a Rutgers alum and uh, a Henry Rutgers uh, scholar, member of Captain Skull, a member of initiatives at Rutgers. I majored in a combination of statistics and economics, essentially known as econometrics. So multidisciplinary as a uh, major between two schools back then, and then did two secondaries, uh, which some call minors or concentrations these days. One was in cinematic arts and technology, and the second one was in computer science. And then uh, started my career in technology, uh, working for large global conglomerates like AT&T, LexisNexis, um, a global insurance company, worked in the original World Trade Center uh, in New York City. And then after that, went to grad school to get my doctorate in law and focused mostly on entrepreneurial and business and commercial law. Uh, practice law for a number of years, representing mostly founders and C-suite executives in companies and organizations nationally and internationally. Then became an angel investor, making investments in startups and emerging growth companies. Then uh, co-founded a um, institutional firm, a private equity firm, so that I can do investments at scale and more institutionally. Uh, that um, ran for about 10 years until we came to the end of our 
uh, life or term in the private equity world. Um, and then over the last 25 or 30 years, I've always been an entrepreneur at heart. I'm a serial entrepreneur, co-founded 10 companies. I'm launching my uh, next two companies this year in 2020. One is in the space of artificial intelligence and deep learning, um, meeting the intersection at the intersection of, or converging rather at the intersection of uh, human capital performance management and improvement. So essentially, uh, quantifying qualitative measures of performance management and performance improvement in all types of organizations. Um, the second company is in healthy foods for immuno health. And um, it's basically a food tech uh, company. And then I, um, in the education space, I joined Rutgers in 2015. Um, and I have the unique privilege and honor at Rutgers University to teach across schools across disciplines in a, in a new model called multi and interdisciplinary and experiential learning um, type of model of education. You will see that in the presentation. And uh, I also do guest lectures and advise or um, different programs and initiatives in academic institutions nationally and globally. I advise uh, startup teams at Princeton University, work with teams at uh, Wharton Business School, Columbia, NYU, Harvard, MIT, um, as well as Stanford on the West Coast, University of Michigan, and public and private universities. Um, internationally, I teach courses at or collaborate with universities like Keist University in South Korea and Seoul, um, Keist University in Mumbai, India, or Gunpud University in Gujarat, uh, Singapore, uh, as well, and now exploring opportunities with University of Athens in Greece and some universities in Africa and Europe as well, um, as well as Canada and South America. Uh, those are relatively new on my list. And then the bottom right slide is kind of my advisory work. So I have a company called VX Partners, previous company called Juice Tank. Juice Tank was more of an incubator, um, accelerator, co-working space, and innovation lab for emerging growth and startup companies. Uh, we had about 100 startups in our space sold the company in 2016-17. Um, VX Partners is my current advisory firm. So I serve on advisory boards and I build advisory boards for startup and emerging companies uh, and then provide uh, executive leadership training for companies like Mount Sinai Hospital, Konica Minolta, um, worked on working with the top executives uh, at uh, Walmart and uh, Jet.com. And then also uh, other healthcare companies and institutions. Um, so that's kind of my multidisciplinary world. 30 years wrapped up in nine little pixeled boxes on one slide. And so this is Rutgers Business School, our flagship campus in New Brunswick, New Jersey. Um, we do have other campuses, Newark and Camden, uh, our flagship, this beautiful, gorgeous high tech building that was built approximately when I. Uh, joined Rutgers University as a faculty member. And um, as I mentioned, I teach across schools and programs. So I also design new courses and teach, um, co teach at executive education, where we do customized programs for corporations, corporate leaders, managers, executives. The other uh, program is the executive MBA program, um, where we teach courses here in the US and abroad as well. I also am a co-founder and director of development of the Entrepreneurship Law Clinic at Rutgers Law School. That's in Newark, New Jersey. And then we expanded this clinic last year uh, to Rutgers Law School in Camden as well. There are only uh, three law schools in New Jersey. Rutgers has two of them. And uh, this clinic provides free complimentary entrepreneurship legal services to startups and entrepreneurs in the state of New Jersey. You do not have to be affiliated with Rutgers University, although that is um, preferred, but it is not required. And I'm uh, the founder and director of innovation at the Innovation Lab at the Honors College, which is housed, it's a living learning community housed on College Avenue campus in New Brunswick. And this was also built around the time when I joined as faculty um, and this is a very unique opportunity 
for Rutgers students, including Rutgers business students, to collaborate with the Honors College and Innovation Fellows, where essentially we help take your ideas, help you uh, test them, uh, create prototypes, MVPs, or minimum viable products, uh, create a pilot program, uh, do some research behind it. We give you stipends and some research grants. That's free money. Uh, you don't dilute your equity of your startup idea or venture. Uh, it can be for-profit, non-profit, or a hybrid, something called um, social innovation or a benefits corporation, uh, which you will learn about at Rutgers Business School. And then we help uh, take you on competitions statewide, nationally, and globally. Um, our students have done so well in these competitions. In fact, I have a couple of what I call rock star students uh, on this webinar who will be happy to talk to you about their experiences and what they've done. Some of our students um, have even patented their ideas before they graduate. Um, our teams, undergraduate teams between the ages of 18, let's say 17 and 22, um, two or three of our teams have already filed for patents and they have collectively won or raised close to $100,000 in seed grants or seed competition awards and prizes. So just a phenomenal experience. Um, and then CTAC, this is for graduate students, both masters and MBAs at Rutgers Business School, as well as engineering, um, healthcare, uh, medical school, pharmacy school, and School of Arts and Science in Computer and Engineering. So it's the Collaborative for Tech Entrepreneurship and Commercialization. The reason I mentioned this even for undergrads coming in is because we're breaking silos and we're increasing collaborative initiatives across schools, across programs at all levels. So I mentioned all of these programs because as undergrads, I will open the doors for you to explore these programs, even if they're at the graduate level. I will introduce you to faculty and mentors in graduate programs and undergraduate programs. So none, nothing is closed to you, everything is open, and it's an open collaborative model that I'm helping for Jet Rutgers University. Um, CTEC, as I mentioned, is a collaboration between both Rutgers Business Schools, uh, it's really one Rutgers Business School, but both campuses, and as well as all these other beautiful campuses that we have across um, medicine, pharmacy, computer, and engineering. There's another program called Black and Latino Tech Initiative. This is for women founders or Black and Latino, male or women, co-founders of tech startups. And it's run through the Rutgers Business School, the Center, for, Center of Urban Entrepreneurship and Economic Development. We run a pre-accelerator program, help train them on how to build and scale their company. And then we give away $20,000 every cohort. We're now starting our third cohort this year. It'll be our third year. Um, and then we help these uh, startup companies raise angel investment or um, venture capital money or corporate VC money, help them get into accelerator programs and advance their companies. So these are the courses that I teach at Rutgers University. On the left side are graduate courses, mostly MBA, master's or PhD levels. Um, but as you can see, the common thread is strategy, technology, entrepreneurship, commercialization, disruption, um, and entrepreneurial law. On the right side, on the top, are executive courses for executive education, um, innovation for corporate enterprises, an accelerator to take your ideas to execution in corporate enterprise, and innovation models and frameworks. At the undergrad level, I teach three courses, uh, strategy and business policy and management. Um, but my favorite course is innovation, creativity, and entrepreneurship. It's the one that essentially uh, breaks the rules, creates new paradigm shifts, and is a course about thinking about thinking, second order, third order of magnitude of thinking. Um, it's unlike probably any other course you've ever taken in your life up to the age of um, senior year of high school, and quite possibly uh, the most unique or different course you might take in your undergraduate and graduate experience as well. Uh, I designed that course by first visiting the top 20 business schools in the country and some of the top business schools globally and interviewing students and faculty and deans and parents and alumni to understand what's cutting edge about the concept of mindsets, skill sets, and tool sets, and then kind of built the course around that. Um, some of my students 
current and former are also on this webinar and they'll be happy to share their experiences and answer any questions at the end as well. So what's the big picture? Where's the opportunity? At Rutgers Business School and MGB, our department, we believe that tomorrow's companies, not today's, not yesterday's, but tomorrow's companies and organizations, whether it's for-profit, non-profit, government agencies, academic institutions, will be seeking talent that can excel in these domains. So the first row uh, are our fundamental domains of leadership and management, innovation and creativity, entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is essentially think of it as entrepreneurship, but applied in corporate environments. So in large organizational environments. So not a startup, but like how large companies or established companies can innovate new products, new services, new business models. Uh, and then execution, it's not about the ideas, it's all about execution, strategic and power networking, building your powerful network. It's about teamwork and collaboration, persuasion and influence, how you communicate, brand yourself, everything about public speaking and marketing yourself um, and your company, uh, about adaptability and agility. That's what everyone is going through right now. How do you adapt to change circumstances or unpredicted? Um, uh, circumstances and are you agile? Are you lean and agile and nimble so you can pivot? Um, you know, one side is perseverance, the flip side is pivoting. And then of course, strategy and ethics, the fundamentals of business and corporate. Um, and then lastly, let's not forget uh, emotional intelligence and critical thinking, um, the whole self being mindful, mindful practices, um, all these other elements that are equally important. This image is to talk about our three core values at Rutgers Business School. Actually, recently we added a fourth. So resilience, resourceful, and respect are the first primary foundations. And recently it was reinvent yourself for the digital era. And we can even say the disruptive era because we are no longer living in change. That's old school. Now it's exponential change, accelerated change, and disruptive change. So what I call the fourth level or magnitude of change. And so these are our core values, and then that's our guiding light. That's where we find answers to a lot of our um, internal questions as we grow and develop. And then employers really wanna see hybrid candidates these days. So they want strong functional and technical skills as well as leadership skills. And so uh, you wanna balance these in your academic career, regardless of where, what school or what program you you join. Here's some examples. Um, you can study finance, even quantitative finance or technical finance and leadership or finance and entrepreneurship. There's new disciplines that are being generated now. So in finance, it's called FinTech. Finance meets technology. In um, uh, food, it's uh, food tech. In fashion, it's fashion tech, media tech, um, energy tech, edu tech or education and technology. So you name it now, technology and innovation are now essentially part of the DNA of every industry going forward um, because every sector is being disrupted in, in massive ways. Also, you can do something like marketing and leadership. So we recommend making leadership and management um, and even entrepreneurship concentration as part of your curriculum, regardless of what you study. Um, you can also combine Rutgers Business School disciplines with disciplines outside of Rutgers Business School. So we have some students who might be doing business school major and a minor in maybe the School of Arts and Science and Computer Science or um, Psychology or Language or other disciplines. At the end of it, I do wanna mention, don't get stressed about what is your major, what's your minor, what's your concentration. Once you graduate, it probably will not matter. You want to be an incredible student who can learn fast and learn independently, work in teams, um, build your strengths, turn your weaknesses into strengths um, and be mindful. That will get you much further than what did you major in? After your first job or a couple of internships, no one will even care what your major, minor and concentrations are. Um, and in, these, in this day and age, there's so much interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary that you don't want to just do one thing, you want to pick two or three and kind of almost like build your own customized set of options, if you will. Uh, 
Um, so very quickly, the curriculum within management and global business, option one is to major in leadership and management. You can pick it as a sole major or combine it with other Rutgers Business School majors to do a dual major. Option two, you can uh, do three concentrations, um, nine credits each. Uh, you don't have to do all three. You can pick any one, two, or three. Three might be a little tough, but um, certainly uh, certain ambitious students might figure out a way to do it, but don't just be a book learner. Also get involved in organizations and leadership and experiential learning. Travel while you're a Rutgers student. Travel outside off the campus, get out of the building, get out of the campus, go to New York City, go to Philadelphia, travel to the West Coast in Silicon Valley, travel internationally. Um, and uh, the three concentrations are leadership skills, entrepreneurship, and global business. I'll focus on entrepreneurship. Um, and then if you're not a Rutgers Business School student, but you end up choosing another school at Rutgers, perhaps, you can minor in, in this program as well. 18 credits for non RBS students. That might not be very relevant for the people on this webinar, but this is the spectrum. In our department, we have more than 100 faculty uh, team, and uh, more than half are full time faculty, and approximately half are PTLs or part time lecturers. These are uh, many, in many cases, executives in companies that also teach on the side to bring practical education into the classroom and current information into the classroom. About 30 are active per semester. We have more than 335 or 340 courses per year that are offered, 235 undergraduate and more than 100 um, graduate level. I have some seniors in my classes at Rutgers uh, undergrad right now that are exploring a graduate course in their last semester or in their last year, um, get you know an MBA course or a master's course. So I encourage, you know, anything is possible. If there's a will, there's usually a way. Um, leadership and management major, 15 credits, two required courses, at least two of the following six in level two, and then one elective course, you can do more than one, from a list of 12 electives. I did not list them here, but you'll see some of them in the next few slides. If you're doing a concentration and not a major, um, you, can, you have to take three courses, that's nine credits. And one required course called executive leadership, at least one of the two courses in level two, and then one additional course um, listed at the bottom level three. If you're doing the entrepreneurship concentration, that's again, three courses, nine credits. We focus on innovative, creative entrepreneurial skills, um, also corporate innovation and corporate leadership. So it's not just about starting a company, it's about how do you apply and translate the education and skills and experiential learning in large companies. So a lot of my students who are doing an entrepreneurship concentration are now working and interning at major companies. I'll share some of those logos with you in the slide deck as well. Two required courses, Intro to Entrepreneurship, Managing Growing Ventures, and then you select one or more electives. Uh, the one that I uh, promote is the third one, Innovation, Creativity, and Entrepreneurship, but they're all good and you can't go wrong. We're doing global business concentration, two required courses, more on the global side, one elective, again, nine credits. And sometimes you can mix and match or certain courses may apply to different concentrations as well. Clubs and organizations. There are hundreds of organizations, maybe thousands at the university. You're not restricted to organizations only at RBS. Um, these are some that connect to our department and executive leadership or um, management, uh, entrepreneurship and innovation. Um, there's everything from TEDx to the Venture Capital Club to the Global Holt Prize Competition on Social Innovation, the Clinton Global Initiative. In fact, some of the students that have won top accolades in these various organizational competitions are on this webinar. Um, they've won more prizes than we'll have time to discuss but they're there as a resource. Delta Sigma Pi, and we have other professional business fraternities as well. Uh, Google is a partner, and so we go to their conferences in Silicon Valley and California. Um, we also have uh, Management Consulting Club, um, Launch R for Energy and Green Energy and Green Initiatives, Rutgers Entrepreneurship Society, 
We have a living learning community called the LLC. There's a separate webinar for that. Uh, Dining with the distinguished where you get to have dinner with corporate executives and alumni. Um, real estate club, FIGS first year interest group seminars where upperclassmen teach one credit courses to under uh, freshman students. Uh, uh, Professor Ron Victor runs the Rutgers summer business camp. I'm sure he'll talk about that in another webinar. And then we partner with organizations like Thai to provide mentorship. These are only some that I myself am either an academic advisor, a mentor, uh, or and or supporter. There's many more um, organizations. So here's something from Davos. If you're not familiar with Davos, look it up for the high school students. Um, we're not going to give you all the answers. We expect you to do your own deep dive in independent research to learn things. That's the one distinction between college and high school. Um, we give you a syllabus most of the times, but we expect students um, to learn on their own as well. And there's some courses that are hybrid courses where where you have to learn on your own and, and bring it to the uh, classroom. And so um, the CEO of PwC, PricewaterhouseCoopers, Coopers, a global uh, accounting and management consulting firm like Deloitte and ENY or McKinsey or um, um, other firms out there, even Accenture, um, great firms. At Davos, which is in Switzerland, it's where global leaders and presidents and CEOs assemble uh, every year um, to talk about thought leadership. This uh, was from a couple of years ago where they said, these are the things that cannot be coded and it's difficult to recruit people with these skills, but these are the most important skills to recruit. And if you look at the first top two, creativity and innovation and leadership, um, that's what our department focuses on. That's where all my courses and my ICE course focuses on. And as well as in EI, adaptability and problem solving. So the ICE course essentially is innovation, creativity, and entrepreneurship, but the E is squared because it's also about executive leadership thinking. Um, and as, in, in this course, we uh, the tagline is transforming fluid thoughts into solid ideas and then executing. Uh, so we try to tap into your creative genius and unleash your creativity. We also try to help you identify your comfort zone and then make attempts to break through your comfort zone. Because life and learning actually begins at the end or outside of your comfort zone. So there's a schematic, uh, break through your comfort zone, break through your fear zone, um, start being adaptive, agile learner in the learning zone, and then you grow and scale. Um, and that's when you find your dream and your purpose and uh, build your strengths to um, achieve those. In case studies, um, we also look at very creative companies in my courses like Pixar and Disney and, and uh, how creativity has become a trillion dollar business. Um, we actually cover many CEOs. Uh, so everything from Steve Jobs of Apple and Steve Jobs also made a huge investment and led Pixar um, and other companies. Um, here's a picture on the bottom right where I interview Jack Welsh an iconic CEO of GE for many years. And Jack Welsh, unfortunately, um, may, may he rest in peace, um, within the last couple of weeks has passed away, um, but is considered one of the greatest corporate CEOs in America and globally. So as part of my research, as part of my case studies, I travel the country and the world meeting with iconic executives, CEOs, C-suite executives, founders of startup companies, thought leaders and creatives and innovators. Um, and I interview them, I take their examples and lessons learned, bring them into the classroom. In the bottom middle, that's Gary Vaynerchuk, um, uh, the founder and CEO of VaynerMedia. He's also a celebrity icon and on television. Um, bottom left, the founder and CEO of Panera Bread, met him in Washington, DC. Uh, left middle, um, Harvey Schwartz, former president, COO, CFO of Goldman Sachs, Rutgers alum, and uh, someone who has helped build a program called Road to Wall Street at Rutgers University Business School. Um, top left, the current CEO of American Express. He's actually a mentor of mine, and uh, we've been friends for maybe 25 years, um, or, or maybe 20 years, and so, uh, I, I rely on 
learning from these folks. This slide has kind of the startup founders. Bottom right is uh, a friend who's the founder and CEO of Kind Snacks. Uh, perhaps you've tried their products. They're a social mission-based or social innovation-based company. Top right is Warby Parker, which came out of um, Wharton Business School and University of Pennsylvania. Top center is Honest T. That's Seth. Uh, he came out of Yale University in their business school. Um, bottom left is Ariana Huffington, founder and CEO of Huffington Post. Top left is Wendy. Um, she uh, founded um, a famous cosmetic company, uh, which you may have heard of. Um, and then bottom left, a center is Sarah Blakely, the founder and CEO of Spanx. Um, she's also a shark or a judge on Shark Tank these days occasionally. And uh, so lots of amazing people. And then political leaders from governors to presidential candidates, Andrew on the top right, to uh, President Bill Clinton and Narendra Modi, um, who had, I've had the honor of meeting and having lunch with and learning from all these people, um, including top left is uh, the former captain of the Indian cricket team, one of the best, best or most well-known athletes around the world. Um, top center, I've uh, interviewed several astronauts, um, uh, NFL athletes, NBA athletes, uh, to the center, um, a musical extraordinaire, um, bottom right, Ashraya Rai from Bollywood, comedians like Hassan Minaj, bottom left, I don't know if you recognize her, that's Monique from High School Musical, uh, center left is the first business manager of Taylor Swift, so I try to study like how does Taylor Swift think about entrepreneurship, through her business managers and representatives. And um, this is my first ICE class in 2015. Uh, many of them have become successful founders of companies or executive leaders. Some of, have, some of them have raised significant capital um, and are in fast track in leadership positions. Um, this was our last class. And a uh, number of students, if they got an A's, we make them TAs in the next class. And so, um, Couple of people here might be on this webinar, like Sunetta and Dan, who are our current TAs. Um, then we have some alumni from the ICE course who've won numerous competitions. Many of them have become TAs. These some of them work for phenomenal companies. Some of them are graduating this May, uh, and we feel for them um, because it's their last semester. And um, these are the companies they founded while they were undergrad students at Rutgers and Rutgers Business School. And collectively, they raised about $100,000, won numerous top first place uh, prizes and accolades throughout the country and globally. These are the companies that they've worked for in internships and full-time jobs. Everything from, sorry for the, some of the text being distorted here, but McKinsey Consulting, Deloitte PLBC Accenture, to investment banking on Wall Street, top names like Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Citi, some of them also work in private equity like KKR and other firms, technology companies, Tesla, Microsoft, Google, Facebook, Apple, healthcare consumer companies, and so on and so forth. Um, these students have gotten opportunities to meet with President Bill Clinton and the Clinton Global Initiative. Roshni Rides, a Rutgers uh, team, won a million dollar cash prize for winning first place in the Hult Prize. And then Sulis and Living Waters were Rutgers University, out of 80,000 teams that competed last year globally, we were the only university that had two teams in the final uh, 50 globally. Um, and both teams made it to the top 15 founder circle. And one of our teams was even ranked in the top three um, in the interims before the finals as well. Um, and they got to present at the United Nations. Um, some of them have filed patents already. Nutrivide is another team. These are all collaborative teams with Rutgers Business School students taking leadership roles and collaborating with students from all the other schools at Rutgers as well. Um, Nutrivide is another award-winning team that won thousands of dollars, uh, tens of thousands of dollars, won statewide, globally. Uh, one of their leaders has been named Forbes Under 30 and um, took top prizes in Harvard and MIT competitions. Etc. 
uh, our teams have placed in the top three at the New Jersey Tech Council, at the Wharton Accenture Healthcare Case Comp National Case Care Competition, we came in first place. We came in third place nationally at the Entrepreneurial Organization Finals, and that's Sarah Pomeranz who's on this call, and came in third place, top three in the country for social innovation and entrepreneurship and innovation. At, this was uh, a picture I took at the Google Global Conference in Silicon Valley a couple of months ago. And then we have a new initiative now called RSVP, Road to Silicon Valley Program. It's part of our Road to Programs. Um, we also have Road to Fashion uh, or Madison Avenue, which is the world of fashion. That's a master's program, Road to Wall Street, and now Road to Silicon Valley. It's both Silicon Valley and Silicon Alley. So West Coast to East Coast, all the innovation hubs, all the um, technology hubs in the US and globally. So we provide essentially these four pillars, network capital, intellectual, human capital, and financial capital. We're building this out. This is a brand new initiative. It's the youngest initiative at RBS amongst its programs. And um, we're building it out. We already have a cohort. Um, what students learn by, you have to apply once you're a freshman, um, is experiential learning, uh, industry and alumni networks, career advancement for jobs and internships with some of the top tech companies and business companies. Um, we help fund your ideas, connect you with peers and experts, and then give you tools and training, some virtual, some live. We then build a hub of entrepreneurship courses, incubators and accelerators, co-working space, which we're currently uh, in the early stages of building out, uh, innovation and research labs, and other programs. We focus on three types of skills, technical skills. Um, even if you go to business school and you come to Rutgers, go anywhere else. We hope you come to Rutgers. Um, you have to understand that you cannot just be a business student. The world we live in, you must develop technical skills as well, such as technology and design. Also business acumen, uh, executive leadership and innovation, and core soft skills and success skills like EI and adaptability. Study entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship. Some of the technical skills will include business applications of artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning. You don't have to be a computer science student or an engineer, but you do, under, you do need to understand how business skills translate and lead technical talent and opportunities. Uh, this is our first inaugural cohort, our 2019-20 class for RSVP. That's our Dean of the Business School. In fact, her background, she's an engineer. She initially started as a distinguished faculty member in the engineering school, then came over to the business school and became our dean. That's what I mean by multidisciplinary. Uh, Pravas Moge is our uh, executive um, vice chancellor and provost in the chancellor's office at Rutgers, New Brunswick. And he reports to Chris Malloy, our chancellor. And um, they also work with the president of the university. We're excited because we have had a tremendous president, um, uh, Richard Barchi, uh, for the last several years. And now we have a new president, Jonathan Holloway, coming this July. Uh, his background is Stanford, um, the UC, uh, University of California academic system. Then he uh, was a dean um, at uh, Yale University and then a provost, I believe, at Northwestern. So lots of amazing uh, universities under his belt. And uh, these are our students. Some of them are on this call. We are going to, um, so as incoming freshmen, you can apply um, before September or in the first few weeks, and then you can be interviewed and then be considered. This was a couple of months ago. We took 31 students, including RSVP members, our entrepreneurship LLC and women in business to Silicon Valley, beautiful 72 degrees, and uh, really had an opportunity to meet amazing experts and people from all over the world. So that's my formal presentation, um, which was about 45 minutes. And now we'll open it up to Q&A. So let me, my email address is mukesh.patel at ruckers.edu. I'm also on LinkedIn, feel free to connect. Feel free to have your parents connect on LinkedIn. We're building a great network of people uh, within and outside of Rutgers. So, um, 
Okay, I will now stop the screen sharing and go straight into chat box. So I know. Okay. Um, feel free to ask questions in the chat box or you can um, raise your hand. You can also, uh, since we have a pretty intimate group here, you can also unmute yourself, introduce yourself, and then I will introduce you. Actually, let's start with a brief introduction um, to my current and former students. Um, so let's see who's on here. Um, Hansen, your name is there. Do you um, mind unmuting or showing your video if that's okay? And just tell us a little bit about what you're studying and kind of the programs you're involved in. You know, take 30 seconds, 60 seconds, really quick. Yeah, um, let me take off the camera. I'll take, put it on. All right, can everyone see me? Yes. All right, sorry, the, the room's a little messed right now, but. uh. Yeah, uh, my name is Hansen. I'm a computer science student here at Rutgers University. Um, I'm a graduate. I'm graduating this semester. Uh, Congratulations and... again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, I uh, I'm a computer science student, like I said, and I I do research in artificial intelligence, um, and I'm working on the RSVP initiative uh, with Makesh and RBS to kind of bring more awareness uh, for for the uh, kind of intersection between business and, and tech. Uh, and we tell a lot of the students in the cohort coming in, like uh, you don't have to have like a technical major to be in a tech field. Um, there's many different ways to contribute to the tech space without you know coding and the, the typical, like being in front of a computer for hours at a time. Right. So just a little bit about me, like um, I do some research with uh, Cornell Medical School I've interned at BMW, and this past uh, summer, I've taken classes over at Stanford, uh, some graduate courses at Stanford, just to kind of like pursue this career in AI. Uh, graduating college, I'll be working with Leighton AI. It's a, it's a startup that's been funded by uh, the same investor for Tesla and SpaceX. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much what I'll be doing. Um, that's awesome. And I want to mention that um, this is what I mean by collaboration. We are no longer a old business school where you only think about your major and that's the world you live in. You now have to break boundaries and break silos and and explore all types of great opportunities. And so for RSVP, which is headquartered at Rutgers Business School, but it's a collaborative initiative for students of all majors and schools, undergrad and graduate level eventually um, at Rutgers. And so we partnered, thanks to Hansen, with NVIDIA and uh, offering a certification workshop on deep learning through the NVIDIA Deep Learning Institute. We collaborate with Rowan University, um, and now we're collaborating with Google to bring courses for Google Cloud into RSVP starting this summer and fall, and then also with Microsoft, Facebook, um, and consulting firms to create more curriculum and curriculum design opportunities. The next person I see is um, Sarah Pomerantz. everyone. Sarah. Um, I'm supposed to fit in an intro into 30 seconds, Mikesh. <laughs> you can take longer. I'm just, just uh, you, you can, you can take as long as Hansen or a little bit more, because then I'll come back to you guys for no Q and A, where you'll yeah. get to expand upon a lot of the concepts. Yeah, of course. Um, so good evening or good, whatever time zone everyone is in right now. Hard to say, but, um, my name is Sarah. Just move your camera down a little bit. Mine? Do you have your video on? No, it's not on right now. You do not. Okay, no, no worries. Okay, <laughs> um, keep going. Sorry, my camera's having issues. But um, yeah, so my name is Sarah Pomerantz. I'm a senior uh, studying management with a concentration in entrepreneurship and a minor in social justice. So like Mukesh was referencing earlier, uh, there's a lot of opportunity to mix what you're interested in studying. Um, the social justice minor is in the School of Arts and Sciences, and so I've had the opportunity to take classes across the different schools, uh, which has been a phenomenal opportunity. I'm also an innovation fellow, so I am an honors college student and participated in uh, Mukesh's innovation lab, 
where I worked on founding my startup venture, Sulis, uh, which has been referenced a couple times in the uh, presentation. But uh, essentially, our mission is to provide families in India with a way of cleaning their own water. Uh, so we are one of the startups that has uh, applied and uh, successfully been uh, published a patent. Um, and we competed in the $1 million HALT prize competition, as well as that was the competition with the Global Student Entrepreneur Awards. Um, so I've definitely made the most of all records has to offer in terms of opportunities with entrepreneurship and it's really accessible to any student who's interested in doing the same. A lot of those resources and opportunities are there. Uh, it's just about your, your drive to take advantage of them, uh, which many of our students do. And I've also been involved with Road to Silicon Valley. I co-founded a, a student organization at Rutgers in my freshman year. Um, been very busy, but uh, now <laughs> I'm graduating <laughs> along as, with Hansen, um, and I'll be working at Accenture Strategy in DC in the fall. Yes, so congratulations, Sarah, as well. Um, we're gonna miss you guys uh, tremendously, but I know this is not the end of the journey. Perhaps it's the bigger of the next level of, of collaborative opportunities together. Um, I can, I can tell you I've traveled with Hansen to uh, California at the Google conference in Silicon Valley, as well as Sarah. She was on that trip as well. And with Sarah and her team, I've actually had the privilege and honor of traveling to uh, Dallas, Texas at Texas Christian University uh, in Boston and Cambridge at MIT and Harvard. Um, we've also traveled to India together and then uh, we competed in London, which was a phenomenal opportunity. So I, I met Sarah when she was a freshman at Rutgers. <laughs> a little ways ago. Yeah, and she applied for and was accepted into my innovation lab at the Honors College. Um, and that's where things really started accelerating and a lot of growth uh, and acceleration and innovation happened after that. Um, let's see, any other students, current students at Rutgers on there? I'm just going through the list. If so, feel free to unmute yourself and just quickly introduce yourself. Hello, Professor uh, Patel, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah, it's uh, Anthony Patero. Hi, Anthony, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good. Yeah, um, someone who's an expert in video technology, uh, <laughs> you're turning your camera off, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll turn it on, I'll turn it on. I was just getting the, uh, <laughs> the light ready. Uh, sorry, I'm a little late. I had class, but uh, it's good to no be worries, here. Hello. No worries. All right. Please introduce yourself. Hi. So uh, my name is Anthony Batero. Uh, I'm a freshman uh, at Rutgers University Business School. Um, I ended up meeting uh, Mukesh Patel because uh, on the a weird weird opportunity arose where I got to speak to his class about what I do. Uh, I currently do YouTube. Uh, I started senior year of high school, and I've built a following of about six hundred thirty thousand uh, subscribers. And it was a really weird journey that I had to take by myself. And uh, I thought it'd be hard to find people who had a similar, similar entrepreneurial passion that I did. And Mukesh Patel happened to be the one person <laughs> who I felt like really could help me hone in on that. And since being with him and everyone in the Road to Silicon Valley program, I mean, it's it's been the most incredible opportunity. And I mean, I can't vouch for it enough. And it's we just started and I think Things are only going to go up from here, so I have high hopes. Yeah, we're brand new as an organization, but um, we have the potential. We're already getting corporate partnerships and alumni uh, phil philanthropic uh, investments and building our advisory board, executive advisory board. Um, so, yep. Hey, there you are, Anthony. Awesome. <laughs> Hello. Yes, of course, you would have the professional audio visual equipment. <laughs> uh, what can I say? Yeah, so, look, we even learn from our students. Uh, I learn a lot from folks like Hansen, Sarah, and Anthony, and uh, I pride myself in being a perpetual student. And um, I try to teach my students that your learning doesn't stop when you graduate college. In fact, that's when real life learning actually begins. Um, um, but we try to make it as experiential as possible. Uh, so you never stop learning. It's uh, lifelong learning, as we say. Um, so yeah, tell us a little about what you're studying and kind of some of the stuff you're involved in. Yeah, so I'm uh, gonna be a double major in finance and marketing. Uh, I think the business school has just about a million different paths you can take. 
Um, and I think that it's definitely difficult to find which one suits you, but that's why you have uh, about a year and a half to decide. Um, currently, I'm involved in the entrepreneurship living learning community, which is a group of 15 of us and freshman year, we all get to live together. And then we get to continue our path into a second year. Basically, we just take classes together. We have meetings like once every two weeks. And it's just cool to surround yourself with like minded individuals, people who are, you know, intrinsically motivated more so than extrinsically is something that I care deeply about and, you know, people around me. Uh, and I think the scene, I mean, ICE in general, which is the class that Professor Patel teaches, I mean, those are people that are looking to hone that inner intrinsic motivation. Um, and pretty much that's all I'm involved in right now. Um, obviously, we're in a bit of a hiatus in regards to everything. <laughs> yes, yes, but um, you guys are um, coping really well. And uh, I've dropped in and out of different professors' courses in virtual um, WebEx and Blackboard Collaborate. And it's amazing how engaging uh, some of our faculty and students are. And you're treating this as opportunities to build and create and learn. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, I think the classes have been going really well. Rutgers has definitely been taking this better than some of the other schools I've been hearing. Um, but overall, I mean, everyone's going through it and people are still staying engaged. I mean, even Road to Silicon Valley program, I'm keeping in touch with eboard members and we're trying to figure things out. And I have, again, very high hopes for the future of just the whole entrepreneurial scene at Rutgers. Yes. Um, it's actually now become a top initiative of the chancellor's office and the president's office uh, and the deans, not only in the business school, but even in like computer science or uh, engineering and uh, healthcare. And um, uh, so there's, there's uh, even if you look at what's happening in the real world, you've got companies like Tesla and uh, other startup companies building innovative solutions for the COVID-19 and the uh, healthcare crisis right now. And uh, internationally, public companies partnering with startups, partnering with uh, angel and VC investors and corporate VC. So that's what it's really about. So um, next, what I'd like to do is, since we have an intimate group here, why don't we just have each of the high school seniors briefly just introduce yourself and if your parents are with you or you have someone else with you, um, introduce them as well. Feel free to show your video if you'd like or just audio. So. Um, Real quick, uh, Professor, somebody yep. asked in the chat, they said, will you be able to repeat what the ICE program is? Yeah, so the ICE is a course at Rutgers. We're now trying to turn it into a signature course for Rutgers Business School. It's open not only to the business school students, but open to any school undergrad at Rutgers New Brunswick of any school and major. ICE stands for Innovation, Creativity, and Entrepreneurship. It's a multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary experiential course unlike pretty much any other course that exists. Um, it's very different, it's unique. It's open for sophomores through seniors of, for any Rutgers University students. Um, so it's currently not open to freshmen. However, I encourage you to show up in one of our classes, introduce yourself. That way, when you are a sophomore, I can get you, help you get into the course uh, as a sophomore or junior um, or even seniors. And so, um, it, it's an, it's, uh, it stands for uh, Innovation, Creativity, and Entrepreneurship. Eventually, we would like to establish a center for ICE, which will collaborate with our RSVP program. And um, after that, we'd like to have a building just for ICE at Rutgers University. And so we're working on kind of building these uh, platforms out as we speak. Yeah, if I can add something. Uh, yes. I think it's it's an important note just how uh, popular this class is. Uh, Professor Patel's name kind of transcends himself. Everyone knows about the class, and most people know about Professor Patel uh, in part because of the class. Um, there's definitely ways to get in um, outside of just hoping you win the you know the lotto. Um, like the entrepreneurship living learning community, uh, we get to get in um, second year. Um, I know just knowing people in the class and again, like just going to lectures, that was something that blew my mind that people would just show up to lectures and just hear what, you know, the lecture was like, it's actually an interesting class. Um, so people would just show up and that, that so kind of have, blew my mind. So, uh, as what Anthony's saying, and Sarah is also an ICE alum, um, and Hansen is a honorary ICE 
alum, <laughs> uh, not officially registered in ICE, but showed up uh, on occasion. We, every semester we have 50 to 100 visitors in our class. These include industry experts, uh, C-suite executives, thought leaders, startup entrepreneurs, innovators, creatives, um, also students from other universities. We've had students from Harvard, Penn, Princeton, Wharton, uh, Columbia, NYU, um, MIT, Duke, uh, Stanford, just pop in um, and just come in during their spring break. They'll sit in for a class. So it's, uh, it's a wonderful opportunity to really open the way you think and how to think more like an executive leader uh, and, and an innovator, uh, a creative. Um, so thank you for that uh, feedback, uh, Anthony. I'm looking forward to having you and your entire LLC uh, <laughs> team, your SWAT team in our class <laughs> next semester. That's going to be phenomenal. Yeah, um, be interesting. Yeah. And uh, Sarah, I don't know if, would you like to add anything as a former ICE? I was hoping Sarah would have become my TA, um, but in her mm -hmm. senior year, she studied abroad. And so, you know, studying abroad is kind of overrated. But no, just kidding. It's <laughs> underrated. Everyone should study abroad. I also work for the Office of Study Abroad, so yeah. I can't advocate enough for everyone to study abroad while they are at Rutgers. There's a ton right. of amazing programs, but it is true. I did miss out on the opportunity to be a TA. Though I think I made up for it with how many referrals I sent to the class, um, <laughs> with how many that class was packed full of my friends being like, oh, this is going to be the class about this life lesson. I think the class, I mean, it, it's about innovation, but it's also just about really mindset and how you approach your life and the problems in your life. Um, and, you know, the quote I quote of Mukesh is the most is that it's not what you know, it's who you know, and it's not who you know, it's who knows you. And these are the kind of real world lessons that, you know, in college you want to be taking out of your experiences is that how do you show up into spaces and how are you going to be remembered? Um, those are like the ultimate big questions and Professor Patel makes you think about those as a 21 year old as opposed to waiting till you're 60 before. Starting yeah, you know, and that's that's important. Sarah, thank you for mentioning that that most people are approach a lot of these thoughts and disciplines. Uh, or concepts um, in their retirement age or as at uh, the peak of their corporate leadership age, which could be anywhere, let's say, from, you know, late 30s, early 40s, all the way up to 60s or beyond. And um, and it's it's rare that students under 22 get an opportunity to build that kind of thought process. And so I'm a big proponent of them. I'm glad Sarah mentioned that. And Sarah is one who actually practices those principles and put them to use. Um, I cannot tell you how many people know the name Sarah Pomerantz. And it's not because of like uh, advertising herself. That's not what we promote or advocate. It's because of the contributions she has made in society across disciplines and what Anthony Patero is doing and what Hansen uh, Chan is doing. It's, it's because of um, stepping up the game and contributing to the world and society in different meaningful ways that people will know who they are. And so their names, they're creating legacies at the age of, um, you know, 18 through 22 at Rutgers University and beyond. Not only at Rutgers, they built national and international networks as undergrad students. And so as my students, I will not let you graduate unless you practice these principles. Well, you may still be able to graduate, but uh, ideally practicing these principles as opposed to without and, and learning them. It's also a course where you build friendships, lifelong friendships. And so, so many students, it is also one of the only courses at Rutgers University, not only in the business school, that has its own ICE Alumni Association, uh, which we're going to formalize with the help of Anthony Patero and others like Sarah uh, over the next year. Uh, so now let's have the high school seniors come on. Um, unmute yourself. Feel free to show your video if, if you're inclined. Don't worry, we don't pass any judgment. You can be in your pajamas. That's completely fine with us. Um, and uh, you can have a messy room or a professional setup. No big deal. Um, your hair can be all messed up. 
no problem. So let's go down the list. Who's, uh, let's see, Arash Atahi. Excuse me if I mispronounce any of your names. Um, can you unmute yourself or show your video or whatever you like? Just say hello. Who's there with you? What, what high school are you in? You should be able to just at the bottom or at the top, see unmute. He's unmuted. He's probably figuring out his headset situation. Yeah. Okay. Now, yeah. Let's see. All right. Until he figures that out, let's move on to the second person. I don't know what your name is, but it says BAS 240. A tough don't crowd. Shy. Don't be shy. I will unmute you. You can speak. I'm an admissions counselor trying to learn more about your program. Oh. <laughs> That's great. Um, do you want to introduce your name? Uh, sure. My name is Brenda Snyder, and I am an admissions counselor at Rutgers undergraduate programs. I work in Maryland, Delaware, D.C., and Virginia. Amazing. So yeah so students who are interested you may have gotten way too many emails from me but hey send me an email <laughs> and we'll chat thank you brenda i appreciate it You're welcome thank you thank you who's the next person b-e-n-h-e -E. i will unmute you say hello hi my name is ben englander hi ben yourself. Tell us a little bit about you. Um, I live in New York. Uh, go to high school. Yes. And right now, I'm just trying to figure out where to go. Okay. Which high school did you say? Oh, I go to school. I go to White Plains High School. White Plains High School. Okay, great. Um, how are you coping and making out in this crazy? I'm just sitting in my house and doing some stuff. That's it. <laughs> Good, good. Listen, use this opportunity for home. And if you don't have a very stressful high school virtual curriculum going on right now, use this opportunity to go online and maybe, you know, look at some college courses, look at some programs, kind of map things out, maybe even take some online. There's something called MOOCs, Massive Open Online Courses. You'll see a lot of Rutgers faculty have created online content. Um, so yeah, uh, feel free to keep learning. You don't need to wait you. for anyone to do that. And we hope you would consider Rutgers Business School. Is there, do you have any questions for anyone on this call? Students, um, alumni? I, I put my question in the chat. I just wanted to understand a little bit more about the, the ICE class. And then okay. also, um, this, so you talked about the three, the curriculum of MGB and then um, the three concentrations. Could you just talk about the leadership skills concentration again? Sure. So the leadership skills concentration involves some courses around um, leadership skills and then things like management, management skills, and then introduction to management type courses where you get the disciplines of how to think about um, being a supervisor, um, then being a manager, then being a senior manager, maybe a young executive or an executive or a founder of a company. And how do you think about all the um, concepts, frameworks, models, and practices um, that revolve around building leadership skills across disciplines. So you can still major in, let's say, finance and leadership, or concentrating in leadership while you major in finance. If you're interested in getting a leadership role or having creating a pathway in your career to be in that leadership track in the world of finance, or it could be leadership in marketing or leadership in something we call BAIT, which is business um, inform uh, information and analytics, you know, or sorry, business analytics and information technology. Um, and uh, so you can kind of create a hybrid program. So that's what leadership and management, the leadership concentration is within the, the program. And, and uh, oh, oh, sorry. And also, you don't have to do a concentration, you can take couple of courses in each of the three concentrations. And even though it may not be an official concentration on the transcript, you can still call it like, hey, 
I took courses across these two or three concentrations and kind of created my own concentration. Um, you know, because ultimately it really may not matter long term in terms of what you major, minor, or do concentrations in. So pick things that you feel resonate with your talent, your skills, your aspirations, your passions, uh, your curiosity. Explore some courses and talk to students who have taken various concentrations, and then you'll figure it out. And one more thing, um, I'm very interested in sports. So, how is, so sport management is, I, I also, got into the regular school for sport management. So is it possible or do you know how to major in double major or whatever? It's between sport management and um, in business school and somewhere in the business. So the world? answer is yes, lots of things are possible and that is possible. Anthony, you're nodding your head. You want to share some thoughts? Yeah. So uh, majoring in SAS and uh, any other school is possible. Uh, the only problem you ever run into uh, is if you want to major in two specific schools. So, like, if I wanted to do Mason Gross, which is the school of, like, arts, filmmaking, and the business school, I couldn't do that. But, yeah, if, if sports management's in the regular school, the school of arts and sciences, you can do a business school major. I know a lot of people that do that. Um, double majoring uh, looks great on a resume. I know it's phenomenal for your transcript. Uh, you have a couple of GPAs to choose from. Um, I'll go back to the concentration thing really quick. Don't do a concentration just to show it on your resume uh, at the end of the day, like, you know, I'm doing the job search employers don't really care about your concentration. It's just something to talk about. So if you're not passionate about it, don't do it. Um, but it's a great thing to do if you're passionate about it. And a lot of the times you'll fall into a concentration by accident. Uh, it's basically what I'm going to do. I'm going to get a concentration in entrepreneurship. You know, on accident, but it's just my curriculum, basically. Right. Exactly. So, yeah, yes. so do you mind if I step in? Yeah, sure. Go. Uh, sorry, is, you, is your name Ben? Yes. Hey, Ben. Um, so the sports management major is offered in the School of Environmental and Biological Sciences, I believe. Is that, do you know whether that's oh, correct? I, I just know it's not in the business school. I wasn't, I'm not really sure which one it is, but. Okay, I have to double check that, um, but I'm pretty sure it is. Um, and it's kind of interesting because the School of Environmental and Biological Sciences has their own requirements. Um, so it's just worth definitely looking into for each major you're considering, uh, kind of like what Anthony was saying, how many required courses you'll need for that school. Um, but it's possible to, to combine them. It's also possible to just take the courses in that topic that you're interested in and then take business courses as well. Okay. And, and let's say you major in the business school and you, and, uh, you take opportunities to take courses from other schools and programs. That's fine too. Like I said, sometimes you don't need to declare a major or minor or concentration. It's about what do you do with the opportunities? What do you do in and outside of the courses? What experiential learning? What types of internships? What type of leadership opportunities and clubs? How are you getting off the campus and going to uh, statewide or national or regional or global conferences in sports management, for example? We also have a lot of opportunities because we're a Big Ten school, so there are a lot of students who work at the Rutgers Athletic Center or at the um, She Stadium on Bush uh, that do a lot of sports management type work with the teams. Yep. Got it. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, is Arash Dahi, if I unmute you, try to say hello, see if that works. It's going back on mute. It won't hold it. Okay. Um, we'll keep going. Brian? <laughs> Bri sorry, Brian. Brian. I will unmute you. Go ahead. Say hello. Oh, hello. Um, Rehan? I'm sorry. Rehan. I am yeah. sorry for that. No, it's okay. Um, so, hello. I'm Brehan. Um, obviously a senior. I live in New Jersey and I'm either interested in management or marketing. I haven't really decided yet. Or you can do both when given it, when life gives you the option of A or B, choose A and B. That's true. <laughs> That's great. Um, and which high school did you say? Oh, I go to East Brunswick. Okay, very nice. I've actually collaborated with some of the teachers and students in East Brunswick High School. Uh, 
Um, thank you. You're welcome. Um, Daniel. Let me unmute you in case it's not letting you say hello. Hi, Hi. my name's Daniel. Uh, I'm a senior uh, from New Jersey. Okay. Uh, I go to Homedale High School. Um, okay. uh, before this, I was pretty uh, uh, focused on finance, but I came to this webinar and uh, I found some pretty interesting things. Um, I was pretty uh, interested in your uh, road to Silicon Valley. I thought that was pretty cool, combining the two, uh, like finance and technology. Yep. Um, so. Uh, I'm still deciding, but uh, sure. if uh, Rutgers is my final decision, I think I have a pretty couple options that I can pursue there. Absolutely. You can do lots of pathways between finance, leadership, innovation and technology, and mix and match and combine great opportunities there. Yeah, thank you. Sure. Um, let's see, Pooja, let me unmute you. Hi. Hi. I'm Pooja. I'm a senior at West Windsor Plainsboro High School South. Okay. I'm interested in business, specifically green business, and I'm planning to maybe major in management and maybe okay. minor in finance. Okay, very good. Um, thank you for coming online and joining us. How about Rishita? Say hello. Let's see if the mute works. Hi, I'm Rishita. I'm a senior at East Brunswick High School, like Brehan, and I'm possibly uh, majoring in finance, or, and I'm going to do something with entrepreneurship and going down like that route. Okay, excellent. Now, do you guys know each other, Brehan and you? We're actually, like, really best, like, we're best friends. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. That's great. Um, it's great to, like, come in with some great relationships and then build uh, a ton of new relationships as well. Um, I have a quick question. Yes. Um, what books and journal subscriptions would you like recommend um, listening and reading to before like entering RBS? <laughs> uh, Sarah, <laughs> any suggestions? I have a lot too. Hold yeah, on. yeah. Anthony, Hansen, Sophia. Oh, we've got a Rutgers alum on the call, Sophia Zhao as well. So I'm going to introduce her next, and she might have some suggestions. She's also an ICE alum as well. Um, so I'll start, uh, I think most importantly, the best thing you can do, I mean, if, if you want to be a finance major, definitely, well, uh, Rutgers business school, let's say in general, as in well. general, in general, but especially finance majors, uh, when you go on an interview, they're going to ask you like, oh, what, how are the markets like today? Like, oh, like, you know, what are your thoughts on X, Y, Z? The best thing you can do is to not stress too much about it, but keep it on your plate. So I suggest morning brew. If you don't already have that, yeah. it's just. A daily subscription, you know, it comes in your uh, your email. Read through it every day. Uh, it's great. Like outside of being a finance major, like you know, I just feel like I'm I know what's going on in the world for once. Um, and something you'll get once you're at Rutgers, um, you know, if you decide to come here, Wall Street Journal, uh, you get a free subscription, and you'll realize how far ahead it puts you just by skimming the headlines like let alone read you know read the thing itself like whatever but just knowing the headlines of wall street journal once every other day i, I mean it you're so at Rutgers business school you get free access to linkedin learning which is owned by microsoft um and there's hundreds of courses there so you can uh, take advantage of that mm -hmm. we also can give you access to other moocs massive open online courses um, so you can look at things like Coursera, Udacity, Udemy, edX, um, iTunes University, all of these kind of programs. LinkedIn Learning is great. Also for investments and finance in general, take a look at Robinhood. It has some great uh, content, Investopedia. There's uh, uh, another one called Motley's Pool. Um, these are all credible sites with content in, in the world of investments and finance. And, and things like that. There's a number of podcasts. Once you start searching, you'll see how much is available. Um, and uh, there's nothing in specific that you have to read, but like watch, the, uh, watch uh, CNBC and listen to some of the leaders in the space talk about different companies and businesses and sectors. Watch Bloomberg. There's something called Bloomberg Studio 1.0. There's another program called Peer-to-Peer -peer Connection with the founder of Carlyle Group, one of the top private equity firms in the world. Um, you know, those kinds of things will go a long way. Okay, 
Okay, thank you so much. Yep. Yeah, I pleasure. also want to chime in on on that. I don't know if the video is. Oh, there we go. The video is working now. Yeah. So um, I, I don't have any like uh, finance experience, but I also do. I do trade stocks on the um, on the daily. Uh, so even though I'm a computer science student, like I I take a lot of uh, take a lot of my time to like kind of learn all these like, all the math and stuff behind like stocks and like candlesticks, uh, like pattern trading and stuff like that. And I think over the over the years, as I've like kind of read more and more about different domains, like I think it's really important for you uh, to notice how like each and every one of us has our own different way of learning and gathering information. And essentially, if you're able to kind of create the environment uh, of like just having multiple news sources to kind of like come at you, you start like kind of learning everything through osmosis, right? So like even if you, for for me, how I learn is I have I have my LinkedIn. And when I first started was uh, I, I just essentially added random people and then just cold messaged them and asked them, oh, you're in this industry and this is what, what you're doing. Uh, is there anything more I can learn? And they usually point you in the right direction. Uh, what, what's important is to not only just be subscribed to those things and kind of read, but also to just Google things that you're interested about, um, ask around. And a lot of people are willing to to help out and a lot of people out there are more passionate about mentoring than you really think. That's, so right. that's my two cents. That's right. And then once you're at RBS, faculty also take, especially at RBS, faculty take students out to lunches and dinners and breakfasts and, and vice versa. So um, keep that in mind. Uh, okay, Sophia, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, Professor Hong. Give me one second. <laughs> Okay, hold on. Can you see me? No, you can't. Okay. No. We see S Z. Yeah, we now do. we can see. Okay, awesome. Hold on. Um, I'm Sophia. I took Professor Patel's class my senior year, and I'm getting into um. Sorry, I have a really bad connection in my house, so I have to go to the first floor. Give me one sec. Okay. <laughs> Okay. If it's maybe better bandwidth solution might be to turn off the video. Oh, it is better now. Okay. okay. Um, I professor's ice class my senior year, and it was awesome. So I know you guys are deciding right now whether to come to Rutgers or not. Um, and I think that like going back as an alum, I would love to like just do rockers all over again and if i could do it differently i would meet professor my freshman year like sarah did um i would try to be as involved as possible but not overwhelm myself with everything i'm doing um and i think like looking back i definitely feel that rockers makes you very savvy in terms of making sure you get your class because when you realize that the system is not working for you that day and you're on course sniper and you can't get your class, you have to figure out creative ways. Like let's say knowing Professor Patel and getting a course code for that class. Um, I'm gonna share with you guys like a really brief story. So Sarah and I, we were in Boston for the final round of the Holtz Prize pitch competition, which I led my senior year. Hi, Sarah. Um, and I remember us like hey. <laughs> preparing, <laughs> preparing for the final round of this competition in which Sarah and her team prepped so hard for to get into the regional round and their water filtration system was going to save so many people, especially that year when the hurricane hit in Puerto Rico. Um, upon preparing, I went to other teams, like pitches, and then I memorized all the questions the judges were gonna ask. So then after each round, I would like, I would come back with the Rutgers team. I would say, hey guys, give me your six minute pitch and then the four minute Q&A, I'm gonna tell you guys what the judges might ask you. So we're gonna prepare this. And we did this after every single round and we looked up the judges to make to see like back 
I'm just a one gentleman who had a very technical background. And we actually like listened to like the way they spoke because they had interviews as well. So we were there at like 11 o'clock at night, the day before in the room that they were going to pitch in the next day. And I remember like thinking to myself, like we did like the team, they did so well, but I wanted to at least be well, their mom for the weekend of making sure they had the cherry on top to go into that final round of which they did the following day. And the whole pitch was to understand the business model, to understand the story behind the character they were. Um, her name was Namda. I don't know how to remember this, Sarah. Her name was Namda and they had to tell a story. So it was compelling they had the research done they had the actual device to demonstrate to the judges so at that point when they were in the final round I was like yes guys like no matter what happens like I was just so proud of them. So when they did win the competition I was like I was so happy but I also learned that like you can't really measure everything like leading up to that moment it was obviously all those countless hours put in but just remember, like, yes, in that moment, it was success. But you also have to look at, like, the bigger picture because they went into the next round for the finals. And then even after a whole prize, like, I can say that people still, like, message me on LinkedIn asking me, like, how the entire experience went. And I always message them back because I barely use LinkedIn so I love just talking about it and the experience it brings you is like for me a culmination my senior year and it's the soft skills that the business school teaches you. It's the actual research that goes into preparing for a pitch competition and it's all these things that lead up to that moment. So I feel like you guys are in a very amazing like decision and exciting time right now and I hope that if you guys can take anything away just feel free to message like myself like anybody like we're going to be there for you so if you need help even after today to ask like little questions just email us or LinkedIn message like we're gonna be there so just don't think that it's just a one and done right now but if you reach out we will be here like, even as an alum if professor patel is anything like i'm there like i'll be at Rutgers or even on a conference with you guys so you guys are in a for amazing amazing treat when you come to Rutgers, take ice so no matter what you do just don't be afraid to just ask us questions all right so you know, I, I think everything you're hearing from sophia and just sarah and anthony and hansen they're exhibiting leadership qualities and they are essentially showing you how undergrad students can take on these leadership opportunities in so many different ways and pathways and that's what Rutgers Business School is now positioning itself it is the number one public business school in the northeast it's in the big 10 conference academically we now have uh, a number of amazing sports teams um, and so even from a sports side whether it's soccer and women's soccer and basketball, men's and women's and wrestling and, um, and football, uh, amazing things are happening now um, because we have a new coach that just came back. Uh, we've got a new president coming on board. Um, we've got a phenomenal dean at the business school, Dean Lay, uh, who's a visionary and phenomenal faculty and most importantly, incredible students. Uh, high performing individuals. So um, thank you for sharing that. And yes, they're available to talk to you inside, outside of any experience, uh, anytime in your journey. So it looks like the microphone was fixed for Arash or Arash. Um, please introduce yourself. I don't know if it's working, maybe it's not. Um, okay, sorry um, if the audio is not working. Um, 
Some of the students have posted some resources for you right in the chat box. I love it. These students are extremely resourceful. Um, so you can take a look at some of those links. And with that said, uh, uh, Umi, you're on the call. Do you want to say hello? Hi, um, I'm Umi. I'm actually a freshman currently at the business school. Um, I'm not sure if everyone like introduced themselves before this. I actually have to step out for a while. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, That's okay. So I, I'm currently double majoring in accounting and bait, and I, uh, I'm looking to work to concentration in real estate. So I wasn't really um, familiar with the whole road to Silicon Valley program um, until a few weeks ago, I'd say, when my friend introduced me to it. Um, but I'm mostly interested in the venture capital side of it. And I will say that I think it's a very um, amazing program so far from what I've heard already. And being at Rutgers, especially in the Rutgers Business School, really gives you an opportunity to take part in programs like these. And not only prog programs like these, but also different clubs. For example, we have LIBOR, which is Little Investment Banks of Rutgers. If you're more towards um, the investment banking side or um, anything on Wall Street. Um, and I think you mentioned that we also have the Road to Wall Street program. Yes. So, and sometimes yeah. students do multiple programs. They can do both. Yeah. And speaking on that, I'm actually in a few other mentorship programs. I recently, in the coming semester, I'm going to be in the team up program. And this semester specifically, I'm in the, I think it's the Engaging Leaders program. <laughs> there's a very long name to it, but it's basically a mentorship program. And um, there's a bunch of mentorship programs available at Rutgers. And I think those specifically are something that I really look forward to because they, I feel like mentorship programs really help you to um, in terms of personal development and to really help you find that balance between your advancing your career, but also keeping up your GPA at school. And then at the same time, you know, just having a social life and balancing all these different aspects together. Thank you for sharing that. So with that said, are there any other questions? Just unmute or post it in chat. Um, and everyone's willing to continue the engagement even after this webinar. Thank you uh, for doing that. If there's no further questions, let's see, I don't see any others. Um, and I just wanted to thank Donna and my colleagues, Donna and Ron, as well as our admissions um, officer, counselor, and um, uh, students and alumni. Uh, you guys are awesome. Good luck, everyone. Um, hope you remain well and healthy and make the most out of all the opportunities that come your way. And we are here to help you. Um, you have to consider Rutgers Business School. It is one of the highest ranking and fastest growing ranking business schools in the country and being recognized globally as well. Don't be afraid to reach out. I'm begging you. We're here to help, especially because yeah. you guys are the select few that aren't sitting in your bed right now. Right. So thank you, everyone. Have a great evening. Mikesh, have a good one. Thank you. Have a good one, Mikesh. Thank you. Thank you, Mikesh. My pleasure. It was, it was very good, very interesting. I was, I kind of put out there, what did I put in the chat? Uh, thank you. You're engaging and informative. I didn't mean to hit send right away, but <laughs> no, that's okay. I I love it. Thank you. you. <laughs> uh, thanks for participating. How many of I these do you have much. to do? How many of these do you have to? No, I, I just volunteered for yours. Oh, awesome! I love it. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go team. Um, we had um, on Saturday. They had the open house. So how did that go? Open house. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, I'm sure it was. I didn't participate at all. Okay. Tonight, um, I love it. I love sitting in on your your info sessions.